So welcome everyone. My, my name is Kate McGoy-Smith and I'm with ForkSmart.org. And every year we have put on a ForkSmart Summit. And this year we have two dates. We have Mar Michael Greger coming March 11th. And we also are delighted to have T. Colin Campbell and a Canadian, Dr. Shane Williams, who is a Canadian cardiologist practicing in uh, Northern Ontario, in Bracebridge, Ontario. And welcome, Shane. Thanks. Thanks for having me, Kate. It's nice to be here. I'm really thrilled and honored that you invited me to the summit on June 6th. I'm really looking forward to it. Well, I had the pleasure of meeting you in Bracebridge and then having a chance to hear you give a public talk. And I found you not only um, very well uh, informed and very helpful with practical tips, but also a great sense of humor. So oh, I think people you. are gonna really enjoy their time with you because I know that you're gonna do a presentation and then you are gonna do a question and answer period with our time together. Yes. And so I'm just wondering, I have referred to you as Dean Ornish of the North, as I've shared with people, and it's partly because you have taken really a lifestyle approach to helping people make transitions in their life. And so could you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so I, I finished my cardiology training. Um, in fact, to step back, I did my, a lot of my medical training in Newfoundland, where I was born and raised. Uh, and actually did a pharmacy degree before medical school, so, mm -hmm. so a lot of student loans. And, um, and then went on to medical school, did my medical degree and internal medicine fellowship in Newfoundland, and then traveled to Hamilton, Ontario to do my cardiology fellowship. Mm -hmm. And finished that in 2008, and then landed here in Muskoka shortly after that. Um, thinking, in fact, originally thinking, this is such a beautiful place, I'm sure doctors are dying to work here. Uh, much to my surprise, uh, although that's the small town thinking, I guess, um, I realized that doctors actually don't really want to work in rural areas. So it, was, it kind of was a perfect fit for me because they were in desperate need of physicians. So we settled here in 08. And I was practicing for the first two years in a very conventional way, you know, figuring that I was going to save the world with pills and procedures. And then in 2010, stumbled across a copy of the China study. So a similar story to, to many of us in this area and read it and originally thought, my God, can that be true? Is there that much data around plant-based nutrition? And realized it was true and did some more homework on that area. And then in early 2011, I changed my diet and lost 22 pounds in about 11 weeks and realized there's something to this and started mentioning to patients. And uh, after the first few months, I um, started getting amazing results of people significantly improving and reversing diabetes, improving angina, and then the usual losing weight, dropping blood pressure and cholesterol. So it was around, I think it was around June of 2011 or maybe May of 2011 that I said, this is amazing. I'm going to have to raise money and make a documentary about this. And very short order, it may have been a week or so later, I heard that Forks Over Knives was released. So Forks Over Knives is the documentary that I didn't have to make uh, and saved me probably $200,000 or whoever the bill for that was. And so we, we still use Forks Over Knives right to today as, as, you know, as a tremendous place for people to start, uh, non-threatening, and, and also to give people an insight to the work of uh, mentors uh, like Dr. Colin Campbell and Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn and see the work that they've uh, been at for the past uh, 50 years in this area. And it's uh, such an honor to actually not all these, uh, these you know, iconic individuals, friends of mine. You know, I, I occasionally email them and get responses back, and I still pinch myself to realize, my God, I'm so... Uh, I'm so lucky to know these uh, leaders in this field. I often say, I mean, they're, they're big names now as the plant-based nutrition thing is finally taking off, but yes. I think their names are going to be even more revered in times, years to come. And they're in their 80s now, so I see I'll be telling my grandkids that, you know, I knew some of these men that uh, really changed the way medicine is practiced, and uh, it's, it's proud. I'm very proud to know them. Would you say that your medicine has gone from, and I know that you still do traditional work yes. as a cardiologist, um, but I'm wondering if you see that the model has shifted more from illness to wellness 
and trying to preserve people's wellness. It's um, certainly shifting, of course, as you might expect. I mean, we got a ways to go, but, um, but within the past year or year and a half, as you probably have felt it as well, uh, seven or eight years ago, uh, it was a bit like, oh my God, what's that weird thing? And, and this diet's only for hippies yeah. and, and all the other you know, stuff, the reaction. And, oh my, and I don't know what happened in the 60s, but I think a lot of people ate some pretty bad food because once you mentioned the V word of vegetarianism, people recoil of, oh, my father or my mother fed me cardboard and twigs. I don't know how I survived. And so, so luckily, that's not the way it is today, as you know. Right that there's lots of great recipes and we can feed you a vegetarian chili and, or you could feed me one and you'd never know it, it wasn't meat based and so forth. Right. So like everything, plant-based eating has certainly changed and, and the attitude and the awareness has certainly changed and uh, not small part by, you know, changes in things like Canada food guide, which I'm sure you're as thrilled about as, as yes. I am. We are, we're really thrilled. And uh, I mean, that is a big change for, uh, Canadian government to be listening to scientists rather than agricultural boards. What a concept. Yeah. That, that's a really helpful thing for our health. Um, I'm just sort of wondering, like, you know, when you have a patient that comes in and they, you know, obviously when someone comes in, they sort of start slowly with um, heart disease. It's sort of like high blood pressure. And people kind of go, well, just give me the pills and I'll be on my way. But we know that's a sign of heart disease. And then, you know, then they start having maybe some palpitations and things like that, that they're starting to feel uncomfortable. And then their cholesterol has risen and they need some medication for that. Uh, when do you kind of intervene uh, in sort of your practice of just talking to them about putting some plants on their plate? I, I think everybody deserves to know about this information that wasn't taught to us in medical school. So I, I uh, gently mention it to every patient I see. Right. So, you know, and more sort of like, uh, it's like dealing with palliative care. They teach you that you're not supposed to go in and tell somebody what they got and how many days they got. You ask them, you know, something serious here. Do you, uh, do you want to know more about it or not? And you approach it carefully, you know, that as a nurse. So, so same here, I, I don't uh, come out with like vegetables flying. I, I kind of approach it gently and say, you know, we've gone through all the medical problems and the medications you're on, some of which are probably giving you side effects, by the way. And, and some side effects as an ex-pharmacist uh, that we know about and maybe some side effects we don't even know about yet because a lot of unknowns there. So, so you definitely want to reduce your unknowns. And, and one proven way to reduce the unknowns, the number of medications you're on, is for you to pay closer attention to your lifestyle because it's becoming more and more clear now that, that things like high blood pressure and abnormal blood sugars and high cholesterol, um, people, as I'm sure you hear every day many times, is, oh, it's in my family, and oh, I, I inherited that. Well, most likely what you inherited were your eating habits from your family. And so, so, so and then I met with various levels of skepticism. I said, well, let me show you, like uh, small group things that we've done and, and immersion programs and the numbers uh, in as little as seven days, as, as I've told you and presented to you, are extraordinary and that goes for people with a family history of heart disease and those without so so it's it's each time i speak to somebody if it's only small few minutes about it and each topic it's it's sort of like uh maybe i'm trying to give them the same moment i had when i came across uh, the china study uh, to say, hey just because you don't know about it doesn't mean that this information doesn't exist and let me tell you what i didn't know about even a few years ago and so, people yeah. have said to me my god that's amazing for a physician to admit you don't you didn't know something and that you recently learned something but but heck i mean that's that's the way it should be right well to be honest with you as a former nurse who's worked both in the operating room and at the bedside and in the community i say to people when they have a doctor that will admit they don't know something you've got a very good doctor i think so even though it, they're more likely uh, to be open to help you find the answer then versus if they they sort of fluff over it and they actually don't admit that then it's like you're sort of left not knowing what to do but i guess i really want to salute you with your approach from a psychological point of view of kind of creating uh becoming from an information point of view and then sort of checking respectfully checking the readiness of the person 
to yes. have them invite you to say, tell me more. And, yes. you know, and that's, that's a really, and that's probably a wonderful approach for fan, for people who start a plant-based uh, lifestyle is to do the same thing with their family members, that kind of it, gentle respect, information, check their readiness, and then and have them invite, can you tell me more about it? Yes, because it is, as you know, in the area you're, you, you've taken, which is a critically important area, is the emotional part of this, yes. is that it's, it's, a, it's a very much a hot button item. Yes. And, I and, think Todd Wasselston says, you know, religion and politics are uh, full of conflict, but try adding food. It's a and real, I've said that many times. Yeah. Of, of issues. Now, one of the things is that you kind of have a unique program there. I know that you touched on the immersion. So that would be someone comes to your clinic and, and as an outpatient kind of goes with seven days and getting education and meals and everything. But do you do some ongoing things that help support people? I believe you have some lunch and learns. Could you tell We do. Me? So, so uh, back in 2013, we began doing offering patients to come to uh, what we call a lunch and learn program, whereby right. they, um, they sign up for uh, basically it's a group counseling format, whereby, um, whereby, um, um, whereby they come for one hour per week for six weeks. And I, I gently introduce concepts related to plant-based eating and, and direct them to various resources that I feel comfortable about and introduce them to practitioners, including Dr. Campbell, Dr. Esselstyn, big push for Dr. John McDougall. Yes. I think Dr. McDougall's program is really excellent. Uh, try to get them all to start by watching Forks Over Knives and then direct them to various resources, including Dr. McDougall's website, which is uh, drmcdougall.com, fantastic website. Yeah. So we find that's a, and the other thing, we also cater a plant-based meal or some kind of a meal plant-based for each of the sessions. And again, just as a, I guess it, it is a sales pitch of sorts, but it's a sales pitch with a, you know, with a very good outcome if people are willing to uh, incorporate it give people a recipe to make sure they don't have any allergies. And so we, we do the meal thing and the, and the introduction of the concept for one hour per week for six weeks. And it's been tremendously uh, well received. Yeah. We also actually sell books out of the clinic, not because I wanted to get in to be a bookseller, but I find again, the timing of it, just kind of liken it to my own experience that if I tell somebody about this and they are motivated, then I don't want to even lose, run the ch chance of losing them. I want to kind of sort of buy the books at cost and, and, and sell them the cover at cost just to get the book right in their hand, like get them the copy of uh, The Start Solution or, or uh, Prevent Reverse Heart Disease by Dr. Esselstyn. So, so yeah. it's, uh, it's that kind of a program. We have run, um, of course, in 2014, we registered over, uh, we registered 43 people in the Dominican Republic and uh, had hosted Dr. Campbell and Dr. Esselstyn there for lectures and a number of other people and worked with the uh, chef at the resort, had all plant-based meals with no added oil and did blood work at the beginning and blood work at the end. And we had, uh, as I've shared with you, tremendous results with average cholesterol drops of over 40% in seven days. 40%. 40%. 43% actually. Wow. And imagine being, being able to start to try to treat down that medication where a lot of people complain about the side effects of pain in their legs and uh, all sorts of things. Exactly. So we have that data when people say, oh, this doesn't work or how quick am I going to expect to see a result and so forth. So we say, well, we've done our own. We've done our own study. And, um, and uh, you know, you know, so so we, we use these bits of information to help motivate people and get them on track. We started Lunch and Learn programs mainly as a way to be able to speak in groups of patients so the message could could didn't have to be repeated, you know, 12 times. Yes. Uh, but we did find, I think, as Dr. Ornish's wisdom in the program he designed, find uh, the other aspect of, like you're finding, is the emotional social aspect, which is yeah. not to be diminished, because that's a very powerful, uh, I guess that's why, you know, AA works uh, uh, for some people, and, and different other social networks work, is that even if humans are lost, they just feel a lot better when they're lost in a group. Uh, you know, they just that support of 
having a common goal, which would be to less less sort of uh, revamp our lives and our eating habits. And when you got other people to do it with, it just seems like the adherence is so much better. That sort of, I mean, we have a, all have a basic uh, need for belonging. Just we like do. we need for food and water and everything. And so that group atmosphere gives people a sense of, oh, so you're here on the journey. I'm over here. Or, yeah, I struggled with this. Maybe I can help you with this and you can help me with that. That's, I mean, as you see it, and you know, that, that kind of organic social support, which I know gets talked about and cliched a lot, that's, that's a huge factor, sort of like the mysterious, uh, very powerful factor of being able to, um, of being able to support one another, even if people don't say anything to one another, because yeah. different people have different levels of comfort with that as well. Some people say, well, I'll join the group, but I was worrying that I'm going to put them on the spot and say, this person eats seven hamburgers. Let's beat her up. Like we don't get out with any of that stuff. If somebody wants to sit there and say nothing, that's fine too. But, but whatever their level of engagement that they're comfortable with. And uh, usually by week four, a lot of people who you never thought would start talking, they start adding something too. So it's, uh, it's pretty cool to see actually. So we've had, it's been a great success and we've had a lot of people say to us, you know, gee, we love these sessions and these groups, and we feel uh, we feel this has really helped keep us on track and, and motivate us to to make the big changes. And but we got a lot of friends and relatives in distant places in other parts of Ontario or across the country. Yeah. So we're launching next month a virtual lunch and learn program from our website, and we're really excited about this. That's so very yeah. exciting. That's great. So I guess I also wanted to ask you, uh, with regard to that, I also noticed sometimes you have, you know, I'm thinking the person goes through the six weeks, are there things that they can do as follow-up? Like I, I noticed you have socials, like you have a Valentine's dinner coming up. That's uh, Yes. Yeah, we also decided to, to sort of help build groups in the community by doing a, a monthly, uh, what we call it, a supper club. So people can go, come, um, both those involved with our clinic and friends and relatives, they go and they buy a ticket to a, a meal, uh, a, a four course or five course plant-based meal at a local restaurant. We've had great buy-in from many of the restaurants who understand this no oil concept. One particular restaurant I want to call out Shine, it's a restaurant in the Aurelia area and they have a Shine Express shorter, smaller version here in Bracebridge. Right. And Alex there and his staff have been top drawer with supporting us uh, really because, of course, as you know, many will go vegetarian, but the oil and the dairy avoidance, that's another level that many people go, oh, I, I can't create anything tasty. But Alex is a gifted, gifted chef, and he's uh, really uh, joined with us to to give people a local option that they don't have to sacrifice on taste. And he comes up with these combinations of flavors. Honestly, when you look at them on the plate, first you think that's not going to work and you eat it and you taste it and realize he's created this from scratch and he, he's a gifted, gifted person. So I think that's a very important chapter to this too, because we want to enjoy our food. We don't, yes. we don't want to just be bored and eat just to live. Yes. Uh, we want to enjoy tasty food and exciting food. And uh, so, so that's been an important partnership for us. So your aspect, just out of curiosity, for those people who are at a distance, which many of my audience will be, and I know we will have people from uh, different parts of Canada coming to this summit this year, um, and you're going to be with us on June, Saturday, June 6th with T. Colin mm -hmm. Campbell. I'm just wondering, the virtual one that you're going to be offering, uh, how will you incorporate the sort of food aspect since you do a communal meal uh, with your in-person groups? Somebody asked me, how are we going to get the food? And I said, we'll email it to you, but <laughs> it's not so easy. Wouldn't but I think, I think we're going to combine a local program. We're maybe com joining up with Alex where people literally will go to his restaurant the day of the lunch and learn, get their meal for that day and enjoy it. And that day, right. Alex doesn't know this yet. So I have to clear that with him, but that's my <laughs> fantasy dream for that yeah. to be a link. But uh, what we'll do for people who are linked on and live stream is we're gonna we're gonna have a short uh, a minute or so description from Alex of what was cooked for that day, any tips and tricks for that meal. Send out the recipes uh, uh, as well for people to be able to do it themselves if if they so desire. Really be too intimidated then they can yeah say, hey, and break it down. Actually, do this myself. 
exactly. I don't have to be a top chef to do this. I can actually no. find out um, yeah. how to do this. Oh, that's and I think I do see we're going to we're going to try different restaurant people and different chefs. But I do see between me and you as a secret, I do see Alex being our main sort of chef because yes. uh, uh, flagship kind of place because well, you've been so that amazing. You did the talk. I, I joined your talk that you had uh, in Bracebridge and the food was amazing after they, they did the food for us there. And it was and it was so beautifully presented on uh pieces of wood slab and and just it was it was just i i was in awe i would have yeah, thought he, he always comes up with these nice ways to present and play it and he's yeah. uh he's you know when you can see passion at work and creativity from a chef point of view yeah, he's a gifted man and we are doing things for people who are in the calgary area we're actually doing something very similar you've helped inspire me we do something called special events and so for example this this week we're going to a, a local cafe and they're doing an all oil free three course meal for us lovely so we're trying to do some of those things and what i see it is one thing business owners don't realize is that they could increase their business from 10 to 15 percent just by adding a couple plant-based dishes so, absolutely uh, it's worthwhile we sort of see it as not only support for people but an advocacy for having more uh, plant-based dishes in restaurants that so that we really have a truly healthy choice i mean to and the, to call out and say nice things about most of our restaurant people in our area too even if not all of them have gone no oil yeah. they uh, strictly carnivore central and have added two and three vegetarian options yeah. on the menu which yeah. I, I must say is has they, they deserve a they deserve a nod for that as well because that's 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 them going out on a limb but yeah. they're seeing more people come in and, and, and request these things. So I think, you know, having been at this now seven, eight years in this region, um, uh, I think I think we're making a dent into the regional awareness of this too. So it's it's cool. And I also think it's really helpful because when people have that ex restaurant experience, they realize that they can go into a restaurant and be advocates themselves and check. Yes. Could you, instead of frying the potatoes, could you bake them for me? I don't mind yep. baking. Could you could you do this? Could you put the uh, the dressing on the side, and then I'll decide if I'll have a drizzle versus it being drenched with them. Yeah, we we get people. We coach a lot of people to to interact with their chefs a lot more because some people are really uncomfortable doing that. And, yes. and quite frankly, before I got into this too, I'd be like, oh, why bother? Just okay, give it to me on the menu. But you realize for that little bit of extra effort yes. means the difference between you feeling like. 700 pounds when you walk out of the restaurant when you've eaten tons of oil versus feeling light and more energy after your meal so uh, a couple of positive experiences like that then teaches people that it's worth the effort so sort of food coma versus uh, a hop skip and a jump of energy yeah. right yeah so i just want to thank you for for the fact that just to share with you what you're doing and that you've had this kind of success i know you've worked with thousands of people and I know this won't be our last conversation, but I know I wanted people to just sort of get to a chance to meet you as I felt really rewarded by meeting you. And oh, thank uh, you. they can look forward to meeting you in person on Saturday, June 6th, right here in Calgary at the Performance Hall at the Calgary Central Library. So thank you for your time, uh, Shane. Thank you, Kate. And again, thanks for inviting me. I'm really honored to be there and can't wait to see you and can't wait to hang out with my friend Colin Campbell as well. It's a tremendous honor. Thank you.